Buckeyes now on Sports Illustrated. Brendan. Hey, Nick. Good to see you, man. Hey, um, curious, what do you feel like the biggest lesson that you've learned so far here this year is now that you're a couple games in the year and, and you probably feel like you've got a little bit more of a rhythm going? Um, so I, I guess I would say the biggest lesson is just to keep swinging. Um, don't let mistakes get to you and just keep improving every single play, every single day and uh, practice, you know, practice always makes perfect. And um, the way that we practice, there's a certain way that we do everything and that's going to prepare us for us going into Saturday. So the way we practice and train and prepare through film study and everything like that is a uh, very big in terms of what we do on the field on Saturday. And, and when you've gone from film study and practicing during the week to actually translating it on game day, do you feel like what you saw on film getting ready for the game is actually happening and, and you're able to, you know, do what you had been practicing versus, hey, I've got to make an adjustment because they did something much different than what we thought? Um, you know, every single team is going to always bring in something different against us coming into the game. Sometimes they bring in the stuff that we've been seeing in our practices. Sometimes there's a little trick or a gimmick that they do that we also got to like work on and um, improve with. But, uh, you know, it's just, we practice so hard and we train and we watch film that like Coach Day always says that we should be the fastest and most confident team that we can be because of the amount of work we put in. It's when you don't put in the work, when you don't do the film study and the extra hours out of practice, stuff like that is when people get nervous and people kind of don't really know what they're doing and things like that. So we always train as hard as we can so we feel as confident as we can be coming into Saturday. All right, we'll go next to Austin Ward from Letterman Row. Austin. Nick, your, your teammates have been raving about the way you've played through three weeks. We've seen the champion grades. Do you feel like you're playing as well as everybody is saying that you are? Um, you know, I mean, I, I guess so. I, mean, I just try to focus on – playing as hard as I can to help us win games. That's, that's the end goal of it all. Whatever happens, this happens. Like everyone, as long as we do our jobs, that's what Coach Diggle has been telling us and all our coaches, like as long as we do our jobs and we play as hard as we can, everything will work out for everyone in the end. So as long as I'm doing my job and I'm working as hard as I can, like all the other accolades and like how well I'm playing, as long as we're winning games is like the main point for everything. Thanks, man. All right, next up, Spencer Holbrook, Letterman Row. Spencer. Nick, when you, when you grade yourself and you look at what Thayer's done, how much have you been able to, to learn from him just in this three-game sample size and build off of what he showed you last year and, and use it to your advantage this year? Uh, I mean, I learned a lot. I mean, especially from him and everyone else that's been behind me from Thayer and Isaiah Prince and um, Brandon Bowen, like Josh Alby, all the tackles that I've played here when I was here, and even the film that I watched of all the tackles prior to my time coming here. Um, I've learned a lot from them and especially from Thayer. He's been a big help for me from the summer and the spring, uh, this year especially with me um, getting into a starting role and things like that. So he's inspired a lot of confidence in me and he has a lot of things that he's taught me to um, make me better every single week and every single day through practice and um, through games. All righty, we'll go next to Bill Landis. From hey, Nick, uh, I know we, we talked with you a little bit a couple of weeks ago about, you know, just, just adding on the weight and, and keeping on the weight and how important that is for you. How have you felt that help you now through your three starts and just how maybe powerful do you feel in the run game because of that? Um, you know, I feel powerful, especially with the weight behind me and stuff like that, but I also just feel confident as well. That's kind of the big key with it all. Like at this point with like college football and like the next level and things like that, it's all about the confidence you have going into a Saturday. And that comes from the amount of film and study that you do. And also the way you take care of your body from nutrition, sleep and recovery and things like that. So all of that combined together is encompasses like a really important part of like how I go, how I go on a Saturday, feeling confident, feeling ready to go. So yeah, the weight's a part of it, but it's just all the small little things that Coach Day and our co whole coaches staff talk about, which is taking care of our bodies every single way we can, every single day. How much have things just kind of slowed down for you a little bit now that you've got these games under your belt? You had to start last year. Just how much do you feel like you're kind of reacting and, and not thinking? Um, you know, that's just something that we try to get everyone to do. Just always re react, don't overthink things, cut through film study and stuff like that. But, you know, getting a few games in, it always feels a little bit more comfortable 
getting a chance to play and like being able to see things live and in game. But, you know, it's just about how we prepare and the things that we do. So like, I feel comfortable, but like every week is always a challenge and we're always preparing. So you can never get too comfortable, especially with college football. So you always gotta prepare and keep working and keep grinding to get better. We'll go next to Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Bill. And Nick, it's, it strikes me that you and, and Thayer seem to be kind of so different in certain ways. I mean, you know, he had to he had to lose a lot of weight. You had to gain weight. You were a five star guy. He was a three star guy who started early. I mean, just how, do you guys see the con the contrast between you and, and how do you kind of look at that? I mean, everyone has different journeys and different paths that's why as a unit we always try to figure out how people lives are and things that they've done to get to the point where they are but at the end of the day there's a reason why we were all brought here together at this moment in time and like he's like a great brother through through our unit and great leader so like at the end of the day like I feel like me and him are the same in terms of that like we're like part of this unit and we both have the same goals and dreams and ambitions for us to play the best that we can and find a way for us to help Ohio State win games. So in that sense, we're pretty much the same in that. But I mean, yeah, everyone has different stories. And uh, it's just funny to like look at how different people got to where they are and like the challenges that they had compared to other people. And although they're different, we both have challenges that we had to overcome and find a way to push through. How would you kind of describe your relationship, your friendship with there? Well, there was one of the first people that I met here through Ohio State. Um, and he kind of like took me under his wing, especially when I first got here, because he saw me as like a little brother kind of deal, like some of those kind of going through everything and trying to learn the offense and trying to get comfortable with Ohio State. So he's been like a big brother to me, just teaching me everything. And um, it's even funny that he's actually, I think, two or three days younger than me, technically. But he's been here and he's like, one of the old guys here, like one of the old heads, and I'm looking to him like he's like, you know, like he's a guy that's been here forever and I can learn so much from him, but it's technically he's actually slightly younger than me. So it's just funny to look at it that way, you know? All right. Thanks, Nick. All righty. We'll go next to Nathan Barrett from Cleveland.com. Nathan. Hey, Nick, what impresses you the most about Jeremy Ruckert as a blocker? Uh, he's one of the more physical blockers that we have here. I mean, as you can see throughout the games, he's been finishing people all across the field, um, doing extra effort plays whenever it passes off, trying to get an extra block. That goes along with all of our um, wide receivers and tight ends that we have. Like, we've have, we have a great group of guys that do the extra effort plays even when they don't get the ball at times. And even when they do have the ball, they run hard. And, like, everyone just understands that sense of, like, oh, even though I don't have the ball, everyone works hard so i think just like our skill skill group from our running backs wide receivers and tight ends they all share that sense of no matter what we do they're going to play as physical and hard as they can and jeremy's one of those people that you could see it every single day and every single practice and especially on game days he just puts it all out on the line all right we'll go next to dave biddle from 247 dave thanks mike hi nick uh, coach day said that you're one of the most improved players on the team from last year until this year you've touched on this a little bit but what has enabled you to do that is it the confidence is it the weight gain the strength I mean, i'm sure it's a combination of everything but what's kind of enabled you to be such an improved player this year i mean i think you probably hit it on the head right there it's just everything's just gotten has been just been going right for me i've just been on an upward slope from weight gain to learning the offense better through watching a lot more film um, that quarantine break that we had to even get even more chances to watch film and things like that. And then just getting a chance to play and go through fall camp and everything. It's just the whole encompassing feeling of just getting more confident in every single facet. And it's just kind of culminated together to where I am right now. So it's just everything kind of pushed together. Just a quick follow-up. Um, when you reported in, I believe, what, June of 2018, do you remember how much you weighed then and how much do you weigh now? I think I weighed 265 that June, and now I'm weighing 312, 313. Thanks, Nick. I appreciate it. All righty. Uh, we'll go next to Dan Hope, 11 Warriors. Dan. Hey, Nick. I mean, when a guy like you comes in as such a highly touted recruit, I think a lot of people expect that you know, you're going to play your first or second year. But do you think having to wait your turn and having to develop for a couple of years has kind of helped you getting to where you are now? Um, for sure, you know, offensive line is one of those developmental positions. 
um, that every college has. So like it takes a little while for people to get it going because it's just such a big jump off from office line play from high school to college, you know, no matter what high school you go to, it's just, there's just a different level and a different, different toughness and understanding of the game. So that, in that sense, like, you know, the development was really big for me, but you know, everyone has different stories. Everyone has different paths that they go through. Some guys are the big, highly chatted guys and they take a while for them to go and get, gar- and get their start. And other people are like, no, guys that you never even heard of but they come in freshman year and they're ready rocking and rolling so I didn't really look too much in terms of like oh I'm that highly tied guy or I, I'm not that highly tied guy we never look at it like that especially at a place like Ohio State it's just that everyone has their different story and how they progress and how they develop is just through what they do as a player and then the confidence they build over time and then just like the program itself building that confidence within the player as well. How rewarding is it knowing that, you know, after those couple of years of development that things are really clicking now? I mean, it's just super rewarding because like we're winning games, you know, it's just so, it's just a great feeling being a part of that and like feeling that I have like an investment in how we're winning games. I mean, I felt like I had investment like two years ago in the year and a year in a year ago, because the way that I practice and the way that I helped guys that were maybe the ones on defense or the ways that I was able to um, work hard and um, show, show things I can do during practice for the offensive line as well. I mean, I still felt that same t- sense of investment because like everyone has a role here and everyone has a job that they have to do, but you know, it's just a different type of feeling of investment, which is the same like all the other years, but you know, it's just, different when you're like starting getting a chance to play and like being able to ha- show that like investment with your Thanks, team. Nick. All right. All right. Got time for just a couple more. Uh, we'll go to Tim May from Runner Row. Tim. Uh, thank you very much, Mike. Uh, Nicholas, I was just wondering, uh, how impressed are you by the depth of the Ohio State playbook or iPad, whatever they've got the plays on, you know, and uh, how much of a stress, I guess, is it for one of another term, does it put on the offensive line to, to one play be maybe running power inside the next play a zone play outside to a sprint sprint pass package etc uh just you know just kind of give me your feelings on that um you know it's, it's kind of hard at first when you first get in here and you're trying to learn all these plays like it's just such an extensive playbook with different types of situations and scenarios and then even once you get the plays down now you got to understand okay what happens if you see any type of blitz and then you got to understand yeah. like then it comes to more of understanding the concept of things than really just the play itself. So it's just a very big and encompassing like playbook. But like, once you kind of understand one part, everything just kind of builds on each other. And then once you get it down, you just feel very confident and you just feel great about everything, no matter what the situation is or what the defensive front is or blitz or anything. Thanks, man. All right. And last question for Nick, we'll go to Patrick Murphy, 247. Patrick. Nick, when you're named co-player of the game, offensively with Justin Thayer's named a champion but you have three other guys in the offensive line who didn't grade out as well what is that like for you and, and how do you talk to the guys in, in a week like this when maybe they didn't play up to the level they wanted to but you guys on the outside did well you know it's always about the unit and it's about the team and like what coach day says is that we always tr- strive for every single person on the entire team to grade as a champion and so that's always just a uh, that's always just the thing that we always try to improve on. So, you know, everything is about improvement. So, I mean, Josh and uh, Wyatt, they're both older guys and they know, they know how things are and they know how things go. So they're just guys that always will improve and keep it going. And me and Harry are both first year guys starting here. So me and him both have the similar struggles of like sometimes having great days, sometimes having bad days, but the, everyone on our office line, they're all amazingly talented and, there's no doubt in my mind that we're always going to perform to the best of our abilities. So that's like the last thing I would even worry about with us. Like we're always going to find a way for us to improve and get better week in and week out. And maybe we have a slip here and there, but that's nothing towards the talent that we have and the athleticism and the, um, and the, and our, and our minds and the, and the game of football and our IQ. So we, there's no problem with us there. And Harry had the three holding penalties called in this game. How did you see him react uh, to that as the game progressed. I think they were all in the first half. How did he handle that? You mentioned first year starter. You know, I mean, those are always hard moments. I think he handled it well. I mean, it's just, you know, he's going to improve and keep getting better. Um, we're going to practice hard. So Harry's the last person I have any worry about when it comes to things like that. He's such a hard worker. He's putting so much time and effort 
on and off the field. Like he's one of the guys that watches almost some, some of the most amount of film that we have here. He studies the hardest and he plays with great grit and determination. So like that's something like Harry handled it well. And I think um, he's going to keep performing well and keep doing the things that he needs to do to get better. All right, Nick, thank you very much for your time today. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Nick. And hang tight with us. We're uh, next up on our schedule is John.